Uh, can you guys comment on TRT's effect on one's basal metabolic rate? Consider subscribing, hit that notification bell, and you'll be on your way. This is one that I don't think it directly impacts your basal metabolic rate, but over time, as you get in shape, so this is one of the things that we sort of teach to all of our clients. We do a big education piece. So uh, we, we spend a lot of time up front trying to explain as we're uh, having our consults with our clients, how to best maximize the effects of the program that they're on, right? So if you're coming to me for, uh, you know, you, people come to us for a, a lot of reasons, right? Um, but in most cases, people would generally like to be in better shape. And, and most people would, you know, in general, like to lose a little bit of body fat. A lot of people, by the way, come to us thinking that they want to lose weight and they never lose any weight. But what they do do is they lose a lot of body fat and they add a lot of muscle. Right. So uh, we, we try to get people to stop thinking about weight in general. And we stop think, uh, start uh, trying to get people to think about body fat percentages and getting people into the healthy range of uh, body fat percentages. Right. Uh, you know, a, a lean pound of, uh, of mass. Uh, burns about 10 calories a day, they estimate, right? That, that ends up being about a pound a year of calories. So I always tell people, you know, if you realize that as a 25 year old, uh, you know, and you're in shape, and if you didn't have a six pack, but you were in decent shape, you probably had, you know, 15 to 18% body fat, right? If you gain one to two pounds a year, by the time you're 45, you're, uh, you'd be obese. You'd be in sort of the 25 to 30 to 32% range, you know, uh, most people just have slight weight gains over time. And then all of a sudden they wake up and they don't realize it, but they're 25, 30 pounds overweight and they're obese. And so what we always tell them if, is, uh, you know, of course it's numbers and it's harder to do, but if you actually averaged one to two pounds a year, more of lean mass over that 20 years, you wouldn't gain the 20 pounds that you're in this situation. Right. Yeah. And so we're big advocates of strength training. Uh, we're big advocates of, of more lean mass as a weight management, as a long-term weight management strategy. So we're big advocates for strength training. I'm a huge fan of cardiovascular exercise by walking, by walking. I think walking is one of the best uh, ways to drop body fat percentage and to lose weight. Uh, people who run, you know, if they're running or doing cardiovascular and it's too intense, obviously it can become catabolic. I think walking is effort. There are very few people who have an ailment that prevents them from walking. So, uh, you know, a lot of people could sort of change their health if they just stop watching a sitcom or 30 minutes of TV and, and listen to a podcast and went for a 30, 40 minute walk. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're big. I'm, I'm a big fan. If you had 60 minutes to go into the gym, how would you break it out between strength training and cardio? I would I would suggest breaking it out into 60 minutes of strength training and zero cardio and make sure you walk a lot. You know, that's yeah. me. And, yeah. and the clients that get that, uh, the clients that get and understand that tend to do much better than the mm -hmm. clients who don't buy into it. And, you know, and it's, it's weird because people come to us and they're searching for our advice, you know, but they still sometimes have this wall built up because they're, um, you know, they've been taught over and over. It's cardiovascular is the way to lose weight and you have to focus on your weight. And we're trying to sort of reprogram them in a certain way. Yeah. And so we're always trying to maximize uh, lean mass. And mm -hmm. as you add lean mass, you're obviously going to drive a metabolic rate. Um, yeah. I have a, a great example. Uh, we have a great uh, success story. Husband and wife came to us in June, uh, end of June. And in 10 months, they had both dramatically uh, changed their, uh, their life. He went from 28% body fat. He's now uh, nine and a half percent. He's got an eight. I mean, it's amazing. He, he, by the way, is in a little bit better shape than me. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I, I, I'm sort of uh, happy. I'm really happy, obviously, when my, the clients are in great shape and better than me, but I'm sort of upset with myself when it happens, right? It's a little bit of jealousy, but it motivates me. And she went from 16% body fat and I'm sorry, 30% body fat down to about 16%. Mm -hmm. And the way that they did it was they bought into the strength training. Uh, he has gained 26 pounds of lean mass while dropping 41 pounds of weight. 
So he's only lost about 15 pounds, but he looks like he's lost about 50. Mm. And she has uh, lost 23 pounds of, of fat while she's gained 11 pounds of muscle. Yeah. His, his uh, basal metabolic rate is about 250 calories more per day, which equates to about 25 pounds a year more of calories his body is eating. So now they can, you know, cheat. And they're not going to gain weight. I mean, they mm. basically have improved the amount of food and the quality and, and the enjoyment of life by getting in shape because they burn so many more calories and she burns about 110 more. So uh, so I, I think that the way that testosterone impacts your basal metabolic rate is if you utilize it for if, if it was your limiting factor to gaining muscle. So uh, I think it's Sean, right? So if 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 testosterone was you're low. And the reason why you're not gaining muscle mass when you're going your lean mass, when you're going to the gym and now your levels and your energy levels are up, which allows you to go to the gym and allows you to add lean mass. That is what is going to impact your, uh, your metabolic uh, basal rate. And so we're big fans of that. You know, I mean, I, I know that you're obviously like me, Steven, big strength training guy. It, it just allows us this crazy flexibility in terms of, you know, I eat healthy for the most part, but until I start eating, you know, a pint of ice cream every day, I don't really gain much weight, give or take, yeah. um, you know, so yeah. I don't have to, I, I eat clean, but I don't really have to, if I don't want to. Yeah. I and completely but, agree. Yeah. Uh, and, and that, lot, yeah. Go ahead, Brian. I was just going to say, you know, I think that there's, you know, we, we talk to our clients a lot about, Hey, how do you transform your life? How do you dig your, how do you dig yourself out of this hole? And I think it's a lot of small uh, very small changes. When 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 you add those small changes up, they can be incredibly impactful. Mm -hmm. You know, so if we can optimize hormone levels and improve your testosterone levels, and that gives you a little bit more energy to go to the gym, and you're able to add 10 pounds of lean muscle, and uh, you know maybe more, you know you're burning 100 150 more calories a day. If it gives you the energy to do an additional walk, which by the way, you know go for a one to two mile walk a day. You know, that's, uh, your, if you're my size, you're burning about 200 calories a day. Mm -hmm. And then, and then I always say, uh, and if you eat one less piece of bread, you know, so about a hundred, 150 calories or, or cut out a hundred of your calories, which most people, by the way, would not miss a hundred calories a day. Uh, you know, if you're eating 2,500 calories, you're not going to notice eating yeah. 2,400, exactly. you know, but it's 500 calories a day. That's a pound. That's a pound a week. Mm -hmm. That's how you lose your 50 pounds. That's how the guy who needs to lose 50 pounds lose the 50 pounds, you know, in a week. And hopefully if they're on a, on a, on a, tr a proper uh, hormone replacement therapy program, they're adding lean mass as they go, they feel better. And, but it just, all of these small little tweaks that add up. And I don't think that people pay enough attention. Uh, I think that people, um, you know, are, are, they're not focused on their health as much as they should be. Um, you know, eating a little bit of healthier, a uh, little healthier, uh, exercising a little more, by the way, for those people who don't have experience with strength training, I think some of the uh, best money spent could be hiring a trainer to at least initially, uh, teach you the proper techniques and the uh, proper strength training exercises. Of course, there are a lot of great YouTube channels on this as well, but where someone can r really benefit is if they work with a professional for 10 sessions, um, you know, and then periodically over time, make sure they have good form, make sure they're not going to injure themselves, but in a proper way to take advantage of the, of the testosterone. You know, I think that that's incredibly beneficial. Mm -hmm. I see you yeah. put out, you've been putting out some videos on proper techniques to, uh, on the other channel to weightlift. Yeah. You know? it's uh, I, I completely agree, Brian, um, because a lot of people are asking me, well, you must be doing uh, a lot of cardio, right? Since you're keeping uh, a lean physique, uh, by, I guess 10 to 12% body fat year round. But I actually don't, I, I, I don't do any cardio. I go for long walks. I ride my bike uh, to work once in a while. Uh, I go walking with the children, my wife, but uh, I, I'm not on a treadmill or doing uh, laps around the block or anything. It's really easy to, to, to stay lean with a flexible diet. As you said, I can eat what I want. I choose to eat healthy, but I can put in some snacks once in a while. Uh, I, I don't become fat. And because my metabolic rate is probably rather high since I carry a lot of muscle mass. So 
weight training really yeah it's it's an upward circle eh? you you put on more muscle mass your uh, you have a higher metabolic rate you can eat more calories a day without getting fat so it's uh, yeah it's a positive thing exactly i always by the way recommend i have a a, a fitbit mm -hmm. a, a simple fitness tracker You know, I think people benefit, uh, you know, most people probably average five to 6,000 steps a day. If, you know, if they break out their phone, a lot of people, it's literally the difference of, of uh, setting a goal of, let's say, 10,000 steps a day, yeah. making sure you achieve that goal, you know, and, and a lot of great positive things can happen. Yeah. And, um, and then you can, you can cheat, you know, I'm not like, a, uh, I don't think that people should cheat uh, frequently on the food but it gives you the flexibility. And so that's where people really benefit when they, uh, Oh, the other thing, by the way, I want everyone to understand the difference of cardio, uh, cardio, uh, uh, vascular exercise to weight training. I use this with all my clients. You know, my grandfather gave me the story of the, give the man a fish or teach him how to fish, right? Give the man uh, a fish and he eats for a day, teach the man how to fish and he eats for the rest of his life. If you build, if you do cardio, it works that day. If you build lean mass, that burns additional calories every single day, even if you're not able to make it to the gym on that particular day, even if it's raining outside and you can't go for your three mile run, you know, the cardio, uh, the cardio is, is temporary where the lean mass is always with you. Yeah. 100%.